we're doing. Uh, we're doing our first block sand on our Mercedes. Now, when I'm saying first block sand, um, we've went through all the procedures of putting primer on it, and we used polyester primer. We did not use 2K primer. This is one step above, and it's a thicker filler primer. It's not a spray on Bondo, it is a primer. And we went ahead and used that on here. So, what I'm doing now is I'm doing my first block sand. And if you look at uh, the situation we have, you can see where I've already made marks of problems that have arisen on the vehicle. Um, after priming it and looking at it uh, with the light, I notice there's a lot of waves going on in the top of these doors and that whole quarter panel right there. But uh, what you saw me doing over here, I am block sanding it, and what I'm using... I'm using a hard block, okay? This is not a flexible block. It is not any type of uh, block that will distort or destruct, you might say, but this is a solid hand block. You can see that, and it is super flat. And the reason I'm using that is because, if you remember, this car had a lot of bodywork on it. Had a lot of body work done to it, and we can go ahead and look at the hood. You can see the hood, if you remember correctly, on the hood, we were really getting onto it really heavy. We heated it up and we shrunk it down. You can see right here where we heated and hammered and dollied it. We had uh, our dead puller and dead machine. Um, the whole back end of this, you can see where we used our dead uh, puller machine, and we had to pull all that out. Our electric dent puller machine. So this hood was in very, very serious rough condition when we started on it, and that was due to sandblasting. The owner requested that the uh, hood be sandblasted inside and out, and if you look at this hood, there's no inner structure at all. It's a one single panel hood. You don't ever sandblast the inside of a single panel piece of sheet metal. But does the owner listen to me? No, all right? Uh, seven out of 10 times, the owner never listens. They think they know all about it. They think they've been checking it out and, and they're car experts, so they don't want to listen. So I'm the one that's got to pay for it. I'm the one that's got to fix everything. And I'm the one that takes the responsibility of if it comes out properly and perfect, because that's what they want on cars that are done in this fashion. Um, after priming and inspecting, we ran into a situation right here on this door. Those body lines did not match up properly. Um, the door was a little higher than the fender or vice versa, so we had to add some filler in that area to get those doors. So when you look down the car, uh, the fender and the door don't stick out. So we've been, uh, I think this is uh, day four. All right, this is a solid day four that we've been block sanding our Mercedes out. Um, I haven't done this door yet, and I still got to do the bottom of this quarter panel. But uh, we have got all of the top done. And another thing I ran into is um, we had to do extensive bodywork on the roof of the car. Why did we have to do extensive bodywork, my friend Pete? Why did we have to do that? Because once again, the owner did not listen to me. He wanted to have the car sandblasted inside and out. This is a single wall panel. There's no structure on it to reinforce it. So, of course, naturally sandblasting the inside of it warped the roof skin. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more.
I'm sanding with here is I'm sanding with 80 grit. Now, when you're using this polyester primer and you put three layers of primer on top of it, you have to use a high grit sandpaper. What I'm doing is I am leveling all the bodywork out and ensuring that this is a very straight panel. We ran into a situation right in this area right here when I was block sanding it because you're going to forget where your bodywork is. You're going to forget it. Unless you take detailed pictures, you're not going to remember where all the bodywork was. Well, as I was sanding in this area right here, what happened is I noticed there was a dark spot in between the Bondo. That's telling me that there was a low spot right there. So to get rid of that low spot, you have to use this type of a sander to ensure that it's breaking down those high spots to flatten out the area to get rid of the low spot. Does that make any sense? Now another sander, and I want to show this to you, uh, there's two other sanders, types of sanders that I'm using, and one of them is this, this very, very handy and very nice, this is made by um, Hutchins, and this is called a speed file. Now, you can see that this is made out of plastic, this is a solid plastic construction, and they still sell these, and this actually has a little bit of a break to it. So when you're using it, what I'm saying, when you're using it, okay, it actually has a little bit of a flex. Not a lot, but just enough to mold itself to the panel that you're sanding. The problem you have when you're using a sander like this, it's, it's hard to control. And the reason I say that is because you're doing it sideways. If you were up here like this, sanding the top of this fender, it's easy peasy squeezy leasy. Alright? But when you're doing it sideways, it takes a lot more force and a lot more concentration to really get it going properly. Another type of sander that we have is made by the same company that this one is made from. And you can also actually purchase these sanders on Hutchins. Hutchins makes these sanders as well. I don't even know if these sanders are available anymore from that company right there. I actually got these on sale. Um, the guy was getting rid of them, discontinuing them, and I bought them dirt cheap, so I had to pick them up. But the good thing about this one, it has a handle on the back to guide. It's a guide handle. And then this here is our steering. You see what I'm saying? So you're kind of like driving this sander. Um, you're guiding it with the back, but you're steering it and giving it leverage on the front. See that right there? And it really, really breaks it down and gets it nice and smooth. And then I also have a mini file. All right, this is the mini version to this one. And when we're working on this, this is what this is uh, the sander that you would actually want to use on this area. But look how this fits into my arm right here. Do you see that, people? Look at this. So what I'm doing, I'm using this as a one-hand sander, and this is resting on my arm. And then I can hold it back here. You see what I'm saying? Look at that. Now watch what happens. Do you see? Now I'm guiding it, and I'm getting the pressure I need by using my arm. Do you see that? I'm using my arm, and I'm really getting a nice, accurate sand job by doing it this way. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. The file board is doing all the work, and all I'm doing is guiding it along. Just like that, using my arm as a rest. Do you see there? Really, really works good, people. Really works nice. Look at that. So now what I'll do is I'll take this sander here. Okay, do you see that sander? I'm going to take that and I'm just going to go over it lightly to make sure that we didn't miss anything. So 
So what we're doing here, when we're doing our first block sand job, what we're doing is we're finding our highs and our lows in our body work. You can see in this area here, it was high. You can see over here, it was high. And you can see right here, it had a little bit of an imperfection of a high spot. And the reason I say that is because I used my flat block, my file, this is called a sanding file, not a sanding block. Anytime that you use a block sander that is very hard and firm, all right, and shaped into this manner, it's called a file, all right, a sanding file. So I'm using my sanding file, and I noticed that I started seeing body work in that area. Now I'm not using a lot of pressure, all right? The sander is doing all the work, the file. But I noticed when I started seeing Bondo appear that that's a high spot because this is a super flat surface, people. So we know by sanding this, we are breaking down that high spot. So let's go ahead and move into the door area and I'm going to kind of show you, we're going to start from scratch here and I'm going to show you what we're talking about when we're talking about breaking it down, finding our highs and lows, and, and getting our door smooth. Now I know that there is imperfection in this, I already told you that from the light, but we're going to start out using this file right here. We're going to use the big long one. So I'm just going to break it down. I'm going to break the top coat off. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to be watching for dark spots to appear. Now the reason I'm looking for dark spots is because that is our low spots. This has already had a guide coat sprayed on it. So let's go ahead and sand this and see what we find. Let's go ahead and try to read this road map. So I just went ahead and sanded that down with my file. Remember I told you let's call this a file. And already what I found, I found a very, very deep imperfection here. I also found one over here right here, right here, right here. And I can already see the beginning of one right here. And if you look right there, you can see, all right, look how it's sanded here and here, but there's a circle right there. That's a low spot. We travel down the door, high, low, low. beginning to be a low spot, but I think our primer filled that one in. Look what we got here. Very low spot. Look at this. Look how big that one is. We got another one right here. So are we going to stop right there and start doing body work? No, we're not. Remember I told you we use polyester primer on this, which is a very heavy filler primer. What we're going to do now that we broke it down, we're going to take our small file and we're going to go ahead and use our arm as a rest and we're going to go ahead and block this out to perfection to see what happens.
Wow. I cannot believe what I'm looking at, folks. I can't believe it. And the reason I say that is that I must have been sleeping the day that I did this side of the car. Um, I can't believe that I missed that much damage. And not just here, but I also saw damage on our quarter panel back here. Um, from blocking this out and reading our road map, I see a low spot here. This is low in this area. I got a door ding that I'm trying to get out. Okay, we still got a little bit of a door ding there. This one here came out. That one actually feels really nice. Big low spot here. Actually, it's gone. So the primer actually worked on this. It actually filled a lot of these in. But we got a low spot here, here. We got a big low spot here. We got a door ding up here. And that ain't gonna come out. And it seems like there might be a little imperfection right in this area. Let me go ahead and clean that off and we'll get a better look at it. Yeah, we can really see it right in this area here, people. And when I say in this area here, you can see where it's still dark. See those dark spots? That's a low spot. And if you look right here, I'm sure you already saw that one. Right there. Looked like those two there were filled in. Those weren't really that low. We come over here, look at that perfect circle. That's a low spot. There's a minor low spot. We got a very deep one right there. So what I'm going to have to do now, I'll have to come back and I'll have to mix up some polyester uh, filler. And we'll go ahead and fill those imperfections in. And then block sand those out. Here's a good example right here using your uh, file sanders, uh, your file boards. All right. This was an a, a imperfection. It was a little bit high. You can see where it was low in this area, but we got all that out. And we got it down to where it's supposed to be by using the right sanders for the right job. If you get a chance, um, here's the name of this company right here. All right. And then, of course, we got Hutchins, a very popular name brand. Um, and this is a speed file. This is their speed file, and they also make these. By the way, I'm just letting you know, Hutchins actually makes these. But you really need to get a set of these uh, sanders. Um, don't rely on Durablox to do the job, the complete job for you. If I would have used my Durablox on this, being a rubber soft compound block, um, I would not have found every single imperfection on this car. So don't rely on Durablox to do the job for you 100%. Durablox are good to use, but not in every single case. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you how to pick and choose the sanders and actually use them the proper way. We'll see you later. I hope this helped you out. And I hope that uh, you are learning out there from this channel. And if you are, I would really like you to subscribe to my channel, show your support. I don't ask for anything but that. I don't have Patreon. I don't have my PayPal account linked to my YouTube channel. These videos take a very long time to produce. Uh, filming them, editing them, uploading them. It's a very big job, uh, but please subscribe to this channel at least. Show your support. Check out the merchandise shelf above the comments, below the description. Leave comments. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. 
Have you ever used these sanders? If so, tell me what you think about them. And if you haven't used them, are you interested in them? Um, what else can we say? Thumbs up. Thumbs up actually helps put this video at a higher ranking in the YouTube uh, video se selection. You know, thumbs up is, uh, helps a lot. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. I think I've asked for enough. Um, you asked for this video. I'm giving it to you. I've had a lot of uh, uh, requests of block sanding primer videos, block sanding Bondo. How do I do it right? This, that, I'm trying to show you everything I can and I'm answering your questions. Answer mine by subscribing, commenting, and thumbs upping. Thank you, have a nice day, and happy block sanding, people. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.